Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Fear of a Flat Plant Planet presented by Toyota. I'm your host, two-time Paralympic athlete, snowboarder, sorry, John Leslie, and I'm joined today with the newest member of the Canadian Para Snowboard team, but not new to snowboarding or extreme sports at, by any means whatsoever, Tyler Turner. Tyler, how are you today? I'm um, great, man. So to chat. Nice. And where are you in Canada? Uh, I'm currently in Campbell River, uh, riding out my quarantine after the World Cup, uh, my first World Cup. Nice. Awesome. And so Campbell River, um, that's on Vancouver Island, correct? Yeah, West Coast Canada, Vancouver Island, north of, you know, halfway up the island on the east side. Yeah. So that gives, that gives everyone, a, I guess, our listeners, because this will be the, you're the final member on the team that I've interviewed. And so, mm-hmm. like, we've gone to Edmonton with Lisa Calgary, you know, Montreal with Greg, um, and now all the way to the furthest West Coast with you. So that's, it's cool, um, you know, that we're a team, but we're also all across Canada. So you yeah, mentioned- the whole thing covered. Right, I know. Makes it really easy for traveling and picking conveniently. <laughs> yeah. um, if like, if Winnipeg had mountains, that would be just the meat in the middle for everybody. Mm. Um, awesome. So uh, you were telling us you were just at a contest uh, in Italy. So successful. Tell, tell us about that. Like, I know that you've been really eager to snowboard, uh, get, in, get into the start gate. Uh, COVID has been like, it just feels like anytime we get a contest on our calendar, it gets taken away. So you got to Italy. Take us through the success. Yeah. There. It's been a crazy year because, like, I just... I'm anxious to see how I can do and, and to actually race. And uh, yeah, I kept getting excited about events. And then they get canceled and excited and canceled. I was kind of set on that there was not going to be an event this year. So just train hard and get ready for next year. And then like a month ago, I get an email that like Italy's going to run a world cup. They're going to run back to back world cups. And like, we think you should go. And uh, I was excited. I tried not to get my hopes up too much because I knew it could all get canceled in a second. But uh, yeah, I was just so excited to finally get to test myself and test uh, the skills that we've been working on all season. And yeah, like you said, it, it ended up being a successful trip. So I'm pretty happy. Oh, um, yeah. First the- place. Yeah. 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 It was a great learning experience. I mean, I went there just to try and figure out how this whole thing works and how I'm going to fit into it. And uh, uh, I was lucky enough that they were back to back world cups. So on the first day, I kind of almost literally fell flat on my face, but uh, I, I fell a lot and kind of beat myself and I was really frustrated, pretty down on myself, but uh, it was probably the best thing that could have happened because it made me really think, um, and get motivated and lucky enough I got to retry it all over again the next day because they were running back to back world cups so um we changed the game plan Greg and I had some pretty good chats about how we're gonna switch it up and uh I was able to go and Friday and and uh yeah even surprised myself with a win so um it was a really cool experience and I learned so much and now I'm just more motivated for next season and just put in the effort this summer because I know what I have to do to be um, better next year. Yeah, because you actually got to race other people with a similar disability as you. And not only similar disability, like those guys are good. Like that whole category, like Chris Voss, Elliot, um, Mike Schultz, like those guys shred and they've been doing it for a long time disabled. And so like, I'm sure you've just been so curious about where do I stack up against these guys? Like, what are the gaps? What do I need to be doing on snow, off snow? Where am I far behind? Am I ahead? So like, what a fun way to be able to like get to gauge yourself. And then, you know, especially with a victory after having a little bit of uh, a harder, harder time the day before. So that's, I love hearing like that. And I'm glad that That you was Greg one-on-one time, like, 
yeah. get, through the, get through that contest together. Like it's good for your first one to uh, be in a nurturing environment. I was really lucky. Um, my first pair of world cup, I got to be alone with the, my coach at the time. So it was good. Those guys, uh, that was my final heat, Chris Foss, Mike Schultz, Noah Elliott. And I was literally in the start gate laughing and Greg took pictures of me like laughing. Cause I was like, what am I doing here? And, <laughs> uh, like I've been watching those guys ride since I've been li literally laying in the hospital bed, like three weeks after my accident, I was, those are who I found on the internet. Cause that's who's ripping. And yeah. that's who I can, uh, I guess, compare myself to or, or strive to be like, and I'm standing in the start gate about to go head to head with them. And I'd been watching them snowboard for a couple of days. I ran a couple of heats against, I had one heat against Chris Voss and I hadn't raced Noah or Mike. And um, I mean, they rip, those guys shred so hard. So I was just kind of laughing, like, what am I doing here? And uh, it's good. Cause I got to just kind of ride pretty wild and loose and and free yeah. it wasn't i i had achieved my goal my goal is to make a final so i'd already achieved my goals and um yeah i was able just to ride pretty pretty loose and uh definitely not sustainable riding like that going <laughs> forward because i probably i had two hand drags in the run and yeah. probably should have fallen but um yeah man those guys are amazing and it was so cool to get to meet them um you know become friends with them quick friend fast friends and then to be able to compete against them is so awesome and i look forward to doing it uh many more times in the future yeah and how, how'd you find that like the was that other than our our team you know i, I guess you had nationals last year um but that would have would that been really your first time in the international disabled snowboard community and did you find it it's i know it's really welcoming but you know was was it welcoming for you like getting to meet the guys did it kind of take the anxiety like off a pedestal so to speak of like now you're in it like these are these are the guys you're, your competitors and stuff yeah it was so great I mean Noah was awesome really welcoming everyone was so welcoming but uh no Noah was really great to me and kind of like helped uh helped me just kind of figure out what I was doing there and and uh any questions I had um yeah, they were all great. I could ask any questions and um, a bunch of guys from that American team were re really helpful. We've spoken online uh, quite a bit before this. So yeah, it was kind of, it was great to finally meet everyone in person. For you, now that you've had time to reflect being the general after the war, do you think that you would have been as prepared had you not had the last season off training? Or do you think that you would have been first place either way well I might have been first place in this event I don't think I would have been first place in like the early events um it would have taken maybe a little bit longer to get into the swing of things but this event by having an entire season before I felt pretty comfortable going down track it was it was pretty sketchy too because it was like plus 20 degrees and it did um, look like you guys were in a little bit of soup. Yeah, it was it was definitely sketchy, but um, yeah, I think I would have picked it up early on too. Um, it just was nice to have uh, a long season of uh, learning and progressing, and I've got so much to learn because I'm so new, not new to snowboarding, but I'm new to snowboarding with two prosthetics. So uh, just like how to set up my feet, alignment, what I do differently I, I keep reverting back to how I used to snowboard and it, it takes a lot to break the habits and reteach myself how how I have to snowboard now and um, yeah it was great to have an entire season or you know most of the season to spend on just really pounding that into my head and and making sure that I'm riding the way I need to ride now not the way I used to yeah I bet there's like so many changes and you know preconceived notions that you have from being a snowboarder because how long did you snowboard before you lost your legs i skied from you know as long as i could walk classic story and uh and then i don't know maybe around eight or ten years old i uh i got a snowboard and 
yeah, there was kind of no turning back. I wasn't really allowed to get a snow. Well, not that I wasn't allowed to, I was just encouraged to continue skiing and, uh, yeah, I really wanted to snowboard. So, um, yeah, once I got a snowboard, never really, I really turned back. So that's, uh, I mean, let's say 10 till 29, I, I had my accident. So let's call it 19 years of snowboarding. That's a lot to try and change. It's, it's pretty built in. Yeah. Fill us in maybe a little bit. Like you, you were snowboarding in that time. Were you racing, guiding, um, maybe kind of take us up to your accident if you don't mind. And then sort of like what transpired in your, how you lost your legs and what your kind of disability is. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I started skiing when I was like two, probably yeah, two. whenever I could walk, Eight, but uh, when you made the switch to snowboarding. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then it was just always, I grew up in Calgary, so it was COP every day after school and then mountains on the weekends. And that's just kind of how it was. So definitely grew up a little bit of a park rat and then um, kind of just being an idiot in the kind of slack country, lift access back country, um, knowing absolutely no idea what I was doing yeah. um, and kind of like, you know, everyone. Um, and yeah, you know, tried my hand at competing slope style and all that stuff. And, uh, my friends were way better than me. So, um, I mostly ended up just shooting photos and trying to chase my friends around, um, cause they were all killing it. Um, and so it was a sweet opportunity for me and went to school in Vancouver Island for photography, kind of chased that a little bit and, uh, realized maybe I wasn't gonna be able to make a career out of that so yeah I was just shifting focus all over the place working hard and in uh operating equipment and and thought man I want to stay in snowboarding and trying to figure out how I could make a living with snowboarding and um operating snowcats was kind of just made sense I'd grown up operating equipment and um yeah so started running snowcats at at COP and got some really great opportunities there um opportunities to like progress in in park building and um yeah it was it was a really cool time I really enjoyed my time there and I, I learned a lot from like from the best of the best and got to work with um some of the best and so many rad opportunities and I just kind of I think I kind of just ran out of energy working at night I think was the biggest thing like um it was kind of getting to me so I wanted to go have a season or two um yeah working in the backcountry if your goal was to make snowboarding your life you know and and then working at COP was good but the sacrifice that came along with it was nights so you know hard to you know have a routine a girlfriend a life outside of it so be able to make that transition over and it sounds just like a huge snowball effect kind of started to happen for you so yeah, I guess that's it. It's just, it was a snowball effect. Oh, that, that story is like random and I, the timeline's way off and everything, but that's as, as uh, boiled down as I can make it. But that's what it was. It was just a snow, snowball effect. And I was just pursuing all these weird different avenues that kept coming up. And um, yeah, it got me in, into the backcountry. And then I was kind of going down that path, trying to get more training, do more courses and everything. And in the summer, I was just progressing myself as a, a skydiving coach, instructor, and um, keeping myself busy snowboarding in the winter and, and skydiving in the summer is pretty great. And then in the summer of 2017, um, I was, yeah, had an awesome summer of skydiving. It was kind of coming to the end of the season. And one of the jobs that I did was filming people doing their first skydive. So when you jump out of the plane as a tandem skydiver, I would jump with you and film you doing your tandem skydive. And unfortunately I had some complications, um, with the landing. Um, and yeah, had a pretty extreme accident, which, um, caused me to have one leg amputated immediately shattered my pelvis and, um, traumatic brain injury and, uh, uh, that's not half of it, but the list is too long for me to remember from my traumatic brain injury. But uh, uh, um, yeah, and 
that kind of started this whole new path that I'm on. Yeah. Crazy. So you would have hit the ground. Like, do you, do you have any idea how fast you would have been going? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't like to try and guess, but let's say fast. Yeah. It would take quite a bit of speed, just like right into the ground. And, and you were in the hospital for quite a while then, right. With, you know, the, the first leg was immediately amputated and then they tried to save your other one. Um, yeah, so like, I was in the hospital for three months right off the bat. And then, uh, Got out of there into rehab, GF Strong, um, did a while at GF Strong. And then, um, yeah, I was rehabbing my right leg really well with a prosthetic. And my left leg was probably going to cause me to use a wheelchair the rest of my life. I could walk like a few steps here and there, but it wasn't pretty and it was extremely painful. So a year later, um, finally made the decision to amputate my second leg, which uh, just sent life into another whirlwind. Although it was actually kind of a positive whirlwind and, and I was quite excited for the second amputation because it meant that there was potential for me to walk again and, and uh, get back to doing a lot of the things I used to do. So um, yeah, a year and a half later, I had my second leg amputated, which has left me as a bilateral below the knee amputee. Um, and I, I call them my paper cuts because I feel like the rest of my injuries are the ones that really affect me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're the most visual, but <clears throat> crazy, man. And to think that your accident was at the end of the summer of 2017, by the time you recovered, let's, you know, almost into 2018, a year and a half from that, 2019, two years later from 2019, you're standing on the podium next to those guys that you were watching on YouTube. Congratulations. That's awesome. I can thank you. John. See why that was a very happy moment for you personally. <laughs> it was such a happy, sorry, John. Talk yeah, yeah. It was such a happy moment, but it was kind of crazy. Cause I came across the finish line and like, I kind of pulled off on my own little area and I would, yeah. I mean, it was like such an incredible moment and it's just like, silence in the middle of the mountains in Italy not a person there it's just like the three competitors oh true. And, uh, so like man you'd love to come across the finish line with like even two people saying good job <laughs> yeah. that is that's very crazy and it goes to show that what we do isn't for the the glory uh <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> oh awesome well that's crazy man crazy crazy story how you um became on our team stoked obviously to be your teammate um yeah so you were watching these youtube videos um you've seen other people how did you get in touch with canada snowboard did you reach out to them did they reach out to you i mean it had been mentioned to me a lot and like right off the bat in the hospital like oh you're you know paris snowboards can be for you and everything and i kind of always brushed it off and then uh i went snowboarding for the first time as a, after having my second leg amputated and, um it went it went actually really well, but uh, poorly because the pain was so extreme. I put in a couple of days at Revelstoke and, and stuff and trying to figure out how to get everything feeling better. And so I could snowboard for more runs a day. And I, I could only do maybe two or three was kind of the max runs a day. And then I went snowboarding with Mike Stastic and we, yeah, we had an awesome day at COP and he was kind of the one that really was like, dude, have you like have you talked to Canada Snowboard? Like you should try and do this. And I was like, ah, yeah. I sent an email to to the coach Greg Picard. I don't really, I don't know him, and uh, he's like, well, you got to get a hold of Mark Fawcett. Like he'll he'll help you out. And Greg would have been great to me already too. Don't get me wrong. Um, and so I sent Mark a message, and and he's like, I don't even remember what he said back. I was like, hey, riding the chairlift with Sasek here, and. I don't know how it ended up, but I got, I went out for and met up with you guys at a camp and, uh, Silver Star, Vernon, I believe. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of, kind of it like late, late 2020. What would you say would be like, maybe like a, a misconception of being on the national team, something that you maybe weren't expecting that you find challenging just, you know, just to share a little bit more into our lives to the listeners it's a lot of work and I'm learning quickly that it's, it, it's not just like fun and games. It requires full commitment. And, 
and a lot of time and energy, um, time away. It's a long time to, you know, it's a big financial um, burden as well. You know, we, we're really lucky on the para team to get the funding that we do receive. And any sport in Canada goes through the system and it takes time and medals and years to, you know, to get to, but yeah, the reality is, is, you know, a lot of those sort of bills do end up on our um, shoulders. So, you know, getting a hotel or an Airbnb for 14 nights isn't cheap. Um, yeah, I definitely, I, maybe that's, that's it, is that it costs a lot to be yeah. on this team. Yeah, but, the misconception um, is you pay a lot of money to be on the team. Yeah, <laughs> although, like you said, I mean, I'm so thankful for the funding we do get. It's really, yeah. really cool that uh, so much of this is able to be offset. And it really but. matches, you know, where we are. You know, we debuted in 2014. Mm -hmm. You know, our sport hasn't been around for that long, especially when you compare it to something like blind skiing or something, uh, you know, they've had time to build their organizations, fundraising, whatever it is. So, yeah, I, I feel like we get a lot, com especially compared to some other teams. Um, cool. So a uh, little fun fact about Tyler. Tyler, you you live most of your time on a boat, correct? Yeah, I live uh, full time on a boat. These full time days. on a boat yeah that's awesome how yeah, did a, that become a thing how does one um take me through the steps of living uh, becoming to living on a boat well date someone that uh <laughs> loves boats um, yeah my girlfriend my girlfriend Just put an ad out boat. on craigslist like look yeah. at the other babe yeah yeah that's it um my girlfriend's uh family has grown up on a boat essentially on a sailboat and um, yeah, she loves sailing and, and so she owned a sailboat when we started dating. And since then we've got, we've kind of like just slowly keep upgrading a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so this is the third boat and, uh, I'm living on it as a bilateral amputee. So, um, yeah, there's some like necessary comforts that, um, I kind of needed and and yeah I think we got a lot of that in this boat although it's still still a lot of work and it's kind of where we put all our extra time and energy is into the boat yeah yeah I bet that's that's cool I, I'm, I'm I really want to come out this summer maybe even sometime soon yeah the boat's running really nicely this year so you definitely have to come out and uh, go fishing or something or sailing Perfect. Heck yeah. Sign yeah. me up. We'll, we'll start to look to May and June and I'll get my butt out there. Cause I want to go surfing with you too. Oh uh, yeah. Um, amazing. So we kind of touched on it a little bit there. You, you were full-time industry guy, um, before you lost your leg winters, uh, in the mountains and then obviously summers off, uh, to make up income. You were skydiving, uh, and you know, stuff like that. And, but, and also doing it on the professional side. Um, are you still doing that? Jumping out of planes? Still, still. What's what's going on? Yeah, man. Opening weekend this weekend, and I am so excited. Um, yeah, it took a lot of work to get uh, my coaching stuff recurrent, and uh, kind of had to get tested a little more um, vigorously. Yeah, a little more rigorous testing yeah. to like ensure I was up to the standards set out by CSPA Canadian sport parachuting association. Yeah. And yeah, I was able to pass everything and like, and do it really well. So, um, I got signed off kind of across the board for all my previous ratings and then even was able to accomplish a higher level coaching rating last summer, Sick. which was really cool. Something I wanted to do before my accident and obviously never got to. So, um, yeah, going into the summer, I'm going to, I've got a lot of crazy plans, but I will be trying to work as much as a skydiver as possible. Um, I've got some limitations now, um, especially like how much I can do it um, because it does wear on my legs a lot, not the skydiving part, the, uh, the walking part um, yeah. once I land. <laughs> but uh yeah i'm i'm skydiving as much as humanly possible again and and uh yeah, i love every minute of it 
That's awesome, man. Um, whatever became of that wingsuit that you were kind of making, did that come to fruition? Is it still coming down the line or? Yeah. So that's, uh, there's actually, um, I don't even know what it is anymore, but a film project of some sort. Um, that was the, we finished it late. Well, we finished the wingsuiting portion late uh, last season, late September. And um, yeah, I, I pulled it off. Um, yeah, so no other bilateral amputee has flown a wingsuit before this, as far as we can find. And um, So yeah, I'm flying wingsuits again and love it. So yeah. I'm so happy that I was able to get that feeling back. Yeah. And you got it on tape too. So there will be the, you know, our viewers will be able to watch this at some point. Yeah. We got it like not just on tape, like we filmed it super well, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. This guy, Zach Moxley, really stoked on that. Yeah. Well, please, yeah. yeah keep me in the loop. And then for, for people listening out there, give Tyler a follow on Instagram and, you know, you'll be able to find it that way. Um, cool. So you, you live a very extreme life, my friend, you know, if you're not busy surfing or jumping out of planes or wingsuiting or winning gold medals at World Cups. Um, I mean, I guess all your spare time, it sounds like now, you know, is put into your boat. But let's say if you were to find yourself with two, three hours, you know, uh, you can't do extreme stuff <laughs> what, 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 what do you like to do, Tyler? Are you a big movie theater guy? I know you dabble in the mini putt. Like what's, what, what could people catch you doing that's not extreme? Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, probably watch the movie. I love movies or uh, I watch a lot of hockey. So I probably Wait. have uh, the hockey game from the night before recorded. Who's your team? Uh, Bruins and Flames, but we're going to have to drop the Flames this year because it's not looking so good. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, big big Bruins fan nice cool fun fun fact um sweet man so the next few months for you what what do they kind of look like like I've heard heard some rumors through the grapevine that you might be doing a bit of a surgery um it's still kind of something I'm, I'm trying to figure out in my head and um sounds like it's a go so yeah surgery would put me down for a couple months and um just try and not lose too much fitness through that time and and then as soon as I can get my leg back on after that surgery, try and get in uh, as good a shape as possible. I know like the critical thing for next season is I need my legs to be stronger. And uh, I have some, some weakness from my back injury, especially my right leg is quite weak and lacks a lot of uh, mobility. So um, try and get it as strong as possible and, and yeah, get, get prepped for next next season is going to be so huge and it's a lot of racing a lot of events and like my goal is to make that paralympic team so um yeah i just got to push as hard as i can and and hope it all works out i highly doubt it'll put you in more pain the surgery so worst case scenario come out in september at the same but hopefully better and then like you say that could just open up a huge door for you, you know, double the training time or whatever it is. And, you know, have that, um, endurance, the endurance that we're going to need to have all next year. So yeah, take some time now. Cause it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be like drinking out of a fire hydrant. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. cool dude. Well, you know, where can people give you a follow? Like you're mostly on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? It sounds like you've got that really cool wingsuit video coming out. Any other projects coming down the line that people can follow along with or, you know, be a part of? Yeah, I, well, Ty, at Ty Turner 14 on Instagram is kind of where I spend way too much time. Uh, and yeah, the wingsuit thing, I, I don't know the timeline on that. Hopefully sooner than later. Um, there, there's some other parts that need to get completed before that can come out and um, there's a couple other projects that have been on the go. There's um, actually uh, this girl, Lara, Lara Shea, filmed, kind of filmed like a documentary of the recovery. And due to COVID and stuff, it's just kind of been set on the back burner. So I would hope that that um, 
will get released at some point, but uh, not really sure. And then, uh, yeah, there's a Telus Story Hive project going on as that well, which uh, that has tight deadlines on it. So I think July that'll be out. And uh, it's kind of talking a lot about this whole like pursuit of the Paralympics. So it's relevant. And uh, yeah, I think uh, if you if you watch the Instagrams, um, I'll be pumping that everywhere I'm sure awesome hell yeah man it sounds like you've got a a lot of exciting things going on and as you should you know you've worked really hard to be in this position and you're going to be continuing to work hard you know it sounds like you're about to go into the knife so the sacrifices continue um I'm gonna put it an end in it there um I'm really happy with things uh I really want to thank you Tyler I want to thank our sponsor Toyota and to you guys the listeners um for joining us today so Tyler, unless you have anything else to say, man, uh, thanks for being a part of us. No, right on, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, always great to chat with you, John.